our sir children hi let us discuss fifth lesson in 10th class social studies is indian rivers and water resources in this lesson in this video we are going to discuss about himalayan rivers about himalayan rivers okay children drainage first of all you should know what is meant by drainage drainage means flowing of a water in a river is called drainage a flowing of a water in a stream is called drainage flowing of a water in a canal is called drainage the drainage system in india is a wall and adjusted itself with the evolution of three physiographic units such as himalayan region indo gangetic plain and peninsula plateau once again i repeat the statement children the drainage system of india is evolved and adjusted itself with the evolution of three physiographic units such as himalayan region indo gangetic plain and peninsula plateau same thing i will explain till the version now drainage system of india ante bharat desha yokka jala vyavastha bharat desha yokka jala vyavastha మూడు భౌతిక అంశాలకు రూపొందింది భారతదేశంలో ఉన్న జల వ్యవస్థ మూడు భౌతిక అంశాలకు అనుగుణంగా రూపొందింది భారతదేశంలో ఉన్న జల వ్యవస్థ మూడు భౌతిక అంశాలకు అనుగుణంగా రూపొందింది ఆ మూడు భౌతిక అంశాలు ఏమేమిటి అంటే ద హిమాలయన్ రీజన్ ఇండో కెంట్రీ ప్లేన్ periods of that same thing and explain english language now the drainage system of india is a wall and adjusted itself with the evolution of three physiographic units such as himalayan region indo gangetic plain and peninsula plateau in india drainage system in telugu we call jala vyavastha in telugu we call bharat desham oka jala vyavastha the drainage system of india is broadly classified into two types one is himalayan river system other one is peninsula river system the drainage system of india is classified into two types one is the himalayan river system the second one is the peninsula river system okay the himalayan river systems are three principal systems the himalayan river systems are three principal river system they are river indus river ganga river brahmaputra river indus river ganga river brahmaputra the peninsula rivers okay are nothing but godavari krishna kaveri narmada etc in india the drainage system of india can be broadly classified into two categories one is himalayan river system other one is peninsula river system okay the himalayan rivers are three principal system one is river indus river ganga and river brahmaputra okay the examples of peninsula river systems are river godavari river krishna river kaveri river narmada children today in this video we are going to discuss about himalayan river system we are going to discuss about himalayan the himalayan river system the himalayan river systems are three principal river system what are they there are river indus river ganga river brahmaputra the himalayan rivers originate at himalayan region the himalayan rivers the like indus ganga brahmaputra originate at himalayan region the himalayan rivers like indus ganga brahmaputra takes birth in himalayan region what is meant by himalayan region the region that has himalayan mountain is called himalayan region the region that has himalayan mountain is called himalayan region let us recall the himalayas in the first lesson children okay already i did the first lesson video okay please see that video first lesson video so that you can recall about the himalayan region so what is himalayan region the region that has himalayan mountain is called himalayan region in this region only himalayas are there in first lesson i said in india the himalayan mountain comprises into three parallel ranges himadri 
Himachal Shivali. Let us recall that lesson. So, okay. So, what is Himalayan region? The region that has Himalayan mountain is called Himalayan region. So, in this region only Himalayan mountains are there. So, this region is called Himalayan region. So, Himalayan rivers originate at Himalayan region. The Himalayan rivers originate at Himalayan region. So, only these rivers are called Himalayan rivers. Okay. Why Himalayan rivers? Why river in this? River Ganga, River Brahmaputra called Himalayan rivers. Why? Because this Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra rivers originate, takes birth at Himalayan region. So these rivers are called Himalayan rivers. This Himalayan rivers takes birth at the glacier of Himalayan mountain. This Himalayan rivers takes birth at the glacier of Himalayan mountain. Glacier means Manchugatta. The glacier means in Telugu we call Manchugatta. So, the Himalayan rivers rises at glacier of the Himalayan mountains and flow at few kilometers. Flow at flow to few kilometers. Due to water divide. Water divide means in Telugu we call Parvata Stenalu. Water divide in Telugu we call Parvata Stenalu. Due to water divide, the Himalayan rivers are separated. Due to water divide, the Himalayan rivers are separated. First, the Himalayan rivers flows in the, to the parallel of axis of Himalayan mountain. First, Himalayan river flows to the parallel of axis of the mountain. Then, they flow bend, they take bend towards the south. From mountain, they flow, okay, the, from mountain, they take bend and flow towards the south. And they cut through mountains, they cut through mountains and later they enter in North Indian plains. After entering North Indian plains, at last they reach us in sea. At last they reach us in sea. Once again, children, say carefully. The Himalayan rivers originate, takes birth at the glacier of Himalayan mountain and flow for a few kilometers. Due to water divide, the Himalayan rivers are separated. Due to water divide, the Himalayan rivers are separated. First, the Himalayan rivers flow to the parallel of axis of mountain. Then they bend south. Then they bend towards south. Then they bend towards south and cut in mountains and enter in North Indian plains. At last, reaches in sea. At last, reaches in sea. In this process, Himalayan mountains carve V-shaped valley. In this process, Himalayan rivers carve V-shaped valley. V-shaped valley is clearly you can see in river Indus and river Brahmaputra. V-shaped valley is clearly can be seen in river Indus and river Brahmaputra. The Himalayan rivers are perennial. Perennial means in Telugu we call Jeeva Nadilu. Okay, the Himalayan rivers like Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra, perennial rivers. Means the water in Indus river, Ganga river, Brahmaputra river flows throughout the year. They never dry up. So these rivers are called perennial rivers. Why the Himalayan rivers are called perennial? Why the Himalayan rivers are called perennial? As these rivers get water from melting snow and rainfall, as Indus river, Ganga river, Brahmaputra river gets water from melting snow and heavy rainfall, these rivers are perennial. The water in Indus river, Ganga river, Brahmaputra river flows throughout the year, they never dry up. Why? Because this river get water from melting snow and rainfall. So these rivers are called perennial rivers. Okay children, these Himal rivers are meanders. These Himal rivers as meanders. Meanders means what? When the water in the Himal river rises up, okay, due to heavy rainfall, the water in the Himal river rises up at that time. The water in the Himal river takes a new way. The water in the Himal river flows in new path like a snake that are called meanders. That are called meanders. See children, see what is meant by meanders? When the water in the Himal rivers rises up, then Himal rivers change the way frequently. The Himal rivers change the way frequently and flow like a snake called meanders. 
So I said, Iman rivers as meanders. Iman rivers as meanders. As my meanders, when the water in the Iman river rises high due to heavy rainfall, then the Iman rivers changes their way frequently and flow like a snake called meanders. Okay, so, so far we discussed about Iman river system. Okay, let me discuss, explain once again. Let me explain once again. Okay, the drainage system of India can be broadly classified into two types. One is the Iman rivers, other is Peninsula rivers. Iman rivers are Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra. In this video, we are going to learn only about Iman river system. Iman river systems are three principal systems. They are River Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra. Why these rivers are called Himalayan rivers? Because this river takes birth in the Himalayan region. This river takes birth in Himalayan region. So these rivers are called Himalayan rivers. How these rivers originate? Where these rivers originate? River Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra originate at the glacier of the Himalayan mountain and flow for few kilometers. Due to water divide, the Himalayan rivers are separated. First, Himalayan river flows to the parallel of Axis mountain and the bend towards south and the bend towards south and cut in mountains. Then they enters in North Indian plains, North Indian plains. At last, they reach a sea. At last, they reach a sea. In this process, Himalayan mountain carved V-shaped valley. In this process, Himalayan mountain is carved V-shaped valley. This V-shaped valley largely found in Indus and Brahmaputra river. V-shaped valley is largely found in, largely seen in river Indus and river Brahmaputra. Okay, these Himalayan rivers are perennial rivers. Perennial river means the water in Indus river, Ganga river, Brahmaputra river flows throughout the year. They are never dry here. Why these rivers are perennial? Because this water, these rivers like Indus, Kanga, Brahmaputra gets water from melting snow and heavy rainfall. So because of this reason, the river Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra, okay, the water in river Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra flow throughout the year. This Himal rivers has meanders. What is meant by meanders? Okay, when the water in the Himal river rises up due to heavy rainfall, the Himal rivers changes the way frequently and flow like a snake. That is called meanders. So Himal rivers as meanders. Now let me discuss about river Indus. Let me discuss about river Indus. River Indus rises at Kailashagiri range. River Indus rises at Kailash range near Manasur Lake in Tibet. River Indus rises at Kailash range near Manasur Lake in Tibet. Okay, so this river Indus flows in Tibet. Tibet is not a country. Tibet is under the control of China. Tibet is the region which is under the control of China. So from Kailash range, the Tibet Indus river originates. From Kailash range, Indus river takes birth and flows in Tibet for few kilometers. Then it enters in India. Then it enters in India, in Jammu and Kashmir state. In Jammu and Kashmir state. From there, from there, this river Indus flows in Himachal Pradesh state and Punjab state. It enters in Pakistan. At last reaches Arabian Sea. Okay, children. Now, this river Indus has five tributaries. This river Indus has five tributaries. Jalam, Chena, Ravi, Bias, Satlaj. First of all, you should know what is meant to buy tributary. What is meant to buy tributary? A small river joins with big river. Then the small rivers are called tributary. For example, Jalam is a small river, Chenab is a small river, Ravi is a small river, Bias is a small river, Satraj is a small river, joins with big river called river Indus. In this small river joins with big river called Indus, these rivers are called tributary. So what are the tributaries of river Indus? What are the tributaries of river Indus? River Jalam, Chenab, River Ravi, River Bias, River Satraj. So these are tributaries of river Indus. The other name for river Indus is called Sindhu. The other name for river Indus is called Sindhu. Once again, children, the river Indus rises at Kailash Range near Manasur Lake in Tibet. From there, river Indus rises, flows a few kilometers in Tibet. Then it enters in India, the state of Jammu and Kashmir. From there, 
the river Indus flows at Himachal Pradesh state, Punjab state, and enters in Pakistan plains. At last, reaches in Arabian Sea. The much part of Indus River flows in Pakistan. Little bit of Indus River flows in India. Indus River has five tributaries such as Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias, Satlaj. The other name for river Indus is called Sindhu. The other name for river Indus is called Sindhu. Next, we we'll discuss about Ganga. Ganga is a twin sources. Ganga is a twin sources. That means two streams join at Devapraya called Ganga. Two streams join at Devapraya called Ganga. What are the two streams join at Devapraya? The one stream, stream means small river. Stream means small river. The one stream called Bhagiradi rises at Gangotri peak. The one stream called Bhagiradi rises at Gangotri peak. Another stream called Arakananda rises at Satopanth Glacier near northwest of Badrina. The one stream called Bhagiradi rises at Gangotri Glacier. Another stream called Arakananda rises at Satopanth Glacier, which is located to the north west of Badrina. Okay, these two streams join at Devapraya. Now this river is called Ganga. Now Arakananda stream, Bhagiradi stream, again okay, met at Devapraya. Now this river called Ganga. Now, okay, when Arakananda Bhagiradi river joins at Devapraya, Ganga river formation takes place. Ganga river formation takes place. Now this Ganga river flows clearly in Aridwar hills. Ganga river flows very clearly in Aridwar hills. In which state Ganga river flows? Means Uttarakhand state, Uttar Pradesh state, Bihar state, West Bengal state. Yeah, when coming to West Bengal, Ganga river divides two branches. Okay, when coming to West Bengal, Ganga river divides into two branches. One branch of Ganga river enters in Bangladesh state. Okay, one part of Ganga river flows through Bangladesh state. In Bangladesh, Ganga river is called Padma. In Bangladesh, Ganga river is called Padma. Okay, this Padma joins with Jamuna river. This Padma joins with Jamuna river again okay, and forms delta and reaches the sea. Okay, this delta is called Ganga delta. Ganga delta is the largest delta in the world called Sundarbans. Ganga delta is the largest delta in the world called Sundarbans. The other part of Ganga river flows in West Bengal state. Before reaching Bay of Bengal, it forms a triangle basin called delta. It forms a triangle basin called delta. Then it reaches Bay of Bengal. This Ganga delta is called Sundarbans. Ganga delta is the largest delta in our in the world itself, not only in our country. Ganga delta is not only the largest delta in our country, it's the largest delta in our in the world. Now, this Ganga river is the largest river in the country. Ganga river is the largest river in the country. Ganga river provides irrigation water for millions of acres of land. Ganga river provides irrigation water for millions of acres of land. Ganga river produces abundant electricity. Ganga river produces abundant electricity. Ganga river is the largest river in the country. Most of the people in the country who live in Northern Plain depend upon Ganga river. Most of the people who live in Northern Plain depends upon Ganga river for livelihood. Okay children, this Ganga river has many tributaries. This Ganga river has many tributaries. Okay, you yes, see now, yeah, Chambal, Betwa, Ken, Sun, Sin. Chambal, Betwa, Ken, Sun, Sin. Chambal, Betwa, is Chambal, Betwa, Ken, Sun, Sin. This, these are small rivers originated peninsula region. Chambal, Betwa, Ken, Sun, Sin originated this peninsula region and they flow towards north. They flow towards north and joins with the Ganga river. So this Chambal, Betwa, Ken, Sun, Sin are the north flowing tributaries, north flowing. Why they are called north flowing tributaries of river Ganga? This river takes alternate peninsula region and flows towards north. And flows towards north and joins with Ganga river. So these rivers are called north flowing tributaries. North flowing tributaries of river Ganga. Okay, and this Ganga has south flowing tributaries. What are south tributaries? River Kosi, River Gandak, River Gagra, 
river Ramaganga, Yamuna, okay, Gomiti. Okay, these are the tributaries called South Flying Tributaries of Ganga. Why? Because these rivers originated in Himalayan region. Kosi, River Kosi, River Ganda, River Gagra, River Ramaganga, River Yamuna, or River Gomiti rise at Himalayan regions in the north and flow towards south and flow towards south and joins with the Ganga River. So these rivers are called South Flying Tributaries of River Ganga. In exam, I may ask you. Mention the South Flying Tributaries of River Ganga. Means you may write what you know, Chambal, Betwa, Ken, San, Sin. Why you get confused? You may think this is North and this is South. Yet if you consider this is South, you write the answer. You will you would write the answer that is Chambal, Betwa, Ken, San, Sin. Are the North are the South Flying Tributaries of River Ganga. If you write like this, the answer is wrong. Okay, the answer is wrong. Here, meaning is the Chambal, Betwa, Ken, San, Sin are the north flowing tributaries. They are not south flowing tributaries, children. They are north flowing tributaries of River Ganga. Why? Do you know why? Because this Chambal, Betwa, Ken, San, Sin, these rivers originate in Peninsula region and flow towards north. They flow towards north and join the Ganga River. So they, are, they are so they are the north flowing tributaries of River Ganga. Okay. Don't uh, okay. Look, overlook here. Don't overlook it here. Okay. When you see in this map, you may feel oh the Chambal, Betwa, Kensan, Sindha are flowing southward. That is wrong statement, children. They are not flowing towards southward. These rivers originated peninsula region and rises and flows towards north and joins with Ganga River. So these rivers are called not flowing tributaries of River Ganga. Whereas River Kosi, Gandak, Gagra, Gomati, Yamuna, Ramaganga, these rivers originated at Himalayas in the north and flowed towards south and joins with Ganga River. So these rivers are called South Flying Tributaries of River Ganga. Okay, so, so far we discussed about the River Ganga. Once again, let me revise this one. River Ganga is a twin source. That means two streams joins at Devapra is called Ganga. What are the two streams joined to the Devapraya? One stream is called Bhadi Nadi, rises at Gangotri Peak. The other stream is called Arakanda, rises at Satopan Glacier. These two streams joined to the Devapraya, there Ganga River formation takes place. From there it flows to Aridwar. In Aridwar, Ganga River flows very clearly. In which states Ganga River flows? The Ganga River Ganga flows in Uttarakhand state, Uttar Pradesh state, Bihar. When coming to West Bengal, the River Ganga divides two branches. The one branch of Ganga river enters in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, river Ganga is called Padma and joins with Jamuna river and forms a triangular basin called Delta, called Ganga Delta or Sundarbans, at last which is Bay of Bengal. The another branch of Ganga river enters in West Bengal state. Before reaching Bay of Bengal, it forms a triangular basin called Delta, then it reaches Bay of Bengal. Okay, Ganga Delta is the largest delta in the world. The other name for Ganga Delta is called Sundarbans. Ganga River is the largest river in the country. It provides abundant water, irrigation water for millions of agricultural land. It produces abundant electricity. Most of the people who live in North Indian place depend on Ganga River for livelihood. This Ganga River has North Flying Tributaries and South Flying Tributaries. Okay, what are the South Flying Tributaries of River Ganga? River Kosi, Ganga, Gagra, Gomati, Ramaganga, Yamuna. These rivers rise in North and flow towards South, joins with Ganga River. So these rivers are called North, these rivers are called South Flowing Tributaries of River Ganga. Whereas Chambal, Betwa, Ken, San, Sin, these rivers are in the region and flow towards North and joins with Ganga River. So these rivers are called not flowing tributaries of river Ganga. Not flowing tributaries of river Ganga. Now let me explain the last Himalayan river system called Brahmaputra. Let us discuss the last river, the last Himalayan river system called Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra river rises at Chimayanga Glacier in Kailash Range near Monsoon Lake in Tibet. River Brahmaputra rises, takes birth at Chamayang Dung Glacier, Chamayang Dung Glacier, Chamayang Dung Glacier, C H E C Ma Yang Y U N G Yang Dung D U N G, Chamayang Dung, 
Chima yang dan. Okay, when you pronounce Chima yang dan, Chima yang dan. Riba Brahma Putra Riba rises at Chima yang dan Malaysia in Kailas Ridge near Manasu Lake in Tibet. From there, Brahma Putra Riba flows for few kilometers in Tibet. In Tibet, Brahma Putra Riba is called Sanpo. In Tibet, Brahma Putra Riba is called Sanpo. Near Laos is on. Near Laos is on. Sanpo River opens wide navigable channel at 640 kilometers length. Near Laos is on. This place is called Laos is on. Near Laos is on. Brahma Putra River, a Sanpo River, opens wide navigable channel at 640 kilometers length. Then it enters in India, in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. It enters in India, the state of Arunachal Pradesh. In Arunachal Pradesh, first this river is called Siam. In Arunachal Pradesh, first this river is called Siam. Then it is called Diam. Then it is called Diam. In Assam Valley, Lobit and Dibang River joins together, forms Brahmaputra. In Assam Valley, when Lobit and Diam River joins, now this river is called Brahmaputra. Okay, Lobit and Dibang River joins in Assam Valley. Now this river is called Brahmaputra. Now this Brahmaputra River flows in Assam state, then Meghalaya state, then it enters in Bangladesh. It enters in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, River Brahmaputra is called Jamuna. In Bangladesh, River Brahmaputra is called Jamuna. This Jamuna joins with Padma. Okay, and forms a triangle basic called Delta. At last reaches Bay of Bengal. Once again, children, River Brahmaputra rises at Chemayantan Glacier in Kailas Lake near Manus Lake in Tibet. This Brahmaputra River flows in Tibet. In Tibet, River Brahmaputra is called Sangpo. In Tibet, River Brahmaputra is called Sangpo. Now, near Laos is zone, Laos is zone. The Brahmaputra River or Sangpo River winds opens wide navigable channel at 640 kilometers land. Then it enters in India in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. In Arunachal Pradesh, first this river is called Siam, then it is called Diam. In Assam Valley, Lopit and Dibam River joins. Now this river is called Brahmaputra. This river, Brahmaputra is famous for flood. Brahmaputra is famous for flood. Now this Brahmaputra river enters in Assam, flows in Assam. Brahmaputra river flows in Assam, then it flows in Meghalaya state, then it enters in Bangladesh state. In Bangladesh, river Brahmaputra is called Jamuna. Okay, now this Jamuna river joins Patma river and forms a triangle basin called Delta, Ganga Delta called Sundarbans, largest delta in the world, at last reaches Bay of Bengal. Children, so far we discussed three immanent river systems. I hope you understand this topic before discussing, before seeing this video. Keep the textbook in front of you. Read the topic from the textbook, then you see this video. So that you can understand very much better. If not, see this video again and again. So that you can understand very much better. Otherwise, okay, though you see many times my video, if you don't understand, okay, please make a call to my WhatsApp number 89786739 to clarify your doubts. I am ready children to clarify your doubts. Again, okay, children, thank you for watching my videos children. In the next video, we are going to discuss about Peninsula River System. Okay, children, we will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.